Hello, I will now be showing you how to search on Libby and the Beehive Library Consortium. To begin, open up your Libby app. If you notice on the screen, there are five icons on the bottom. These will be your navigation icons to the various parts of Libby. Today we'll be focusing on the two on the left. The building on the left that looks like a library is the Beehive Library Consortium. This is where the library puts together a, um, a collection of different types of books. For example, back to school, just added audiobooks, just added books. This is similar to when you walk into a library and you see a display. It's just kind of a place for browsing. You don't know exactly what you're looking for, but you're just kind of browsing different selections. There are various options here, so feel free to take a look and browse some of those. In the bottom left, there is a magnifying glass. This is for doing a specific search. In this case, I'm going to search for history. Now searching this in the Beehive Library Consortium, if you notice there are 4,000 audiobooks, 6,000 books, and 81 magazines with the keyword history in uh, the library. Now we will want to narrow that down a little bit. In this case, I'm looking for audiobooks. So I'm going to click audiobooks. And it narrows it down to those 4,000 audiobooks. That's still a lot of different options. So you may consider putting in other keywords to narrow down your search, say, history of the Vikings. Now here on the left as well, next to audiobooks, you see three lines. This is to narrow down your search more. There are various options, such as sorting it by popularity or date added. You could also make it available now, so only show books that you can check out today rather than ones you have to put on hold. Um, young adult books, biography, so there are various ways to um, narrow down your search results. A few things to look out for in your searches. First, if you notice on the right hand side of each item, there's a little calendar. The calendar means that the item is currently checked out. So you will have to wait for it. If you click on the calendar, it gives you an estimate on how much time it is. It says about three weeks. That's imperfect. Um, it's, it's hard to predict the exact amount. There are various factors that can influence it. Um, but it does estimate about three weeks wait. Uh, it says there are five copies in use and about two people waiting per copy. So that gives you a pretty good estimate on how long you'd have to wait for that item. If you do want to place a hold on an item that is checked out, you can click place hold and then you have an option down beneath to place a hold on the item. If there's an item that is available that you're interested in, then you'll see a plus sign. For example, here this uh, Chasing History has a plus sign next to it. That means this item is available now. You can either click on the plus sign or borrow in order to check out the item. There are a few different options. If you click on the 14 days here, you can choose between 7, 14, or 21 days for your checkout. So I choose 10, 21, and if I were to check out this item, I would click Borrow. Lastly, if you're wanting to do um, a permanent search, so say that if you every time you search in the future you only want audiobooks, you can actually pin a filter. Since audiobooks is a filter here, I'm going to go ahead and click it again, and there's an option that says Pin Filter. Now, if I do more searches, so this time, say I'm searching for the Vikings. My search now remembers that I wanted audiobooks. And if you want in the future to look for ebooks, you'll need to then remove that filter. Um, and then it opens it up so that future searches will include more than just audiobooks. But it's a convenient way to narrow down future searches for those who are only interest in a specific format, specific language, etc.